Hello and thanks for joining us on TVC News this hour. Minister of the Federal Capital Territory of um, Yesam Wike has declared the park and pay scheme in the nation's capital illegal. He said this during a press parley in Abuja where he highlighted his success in the last one year in office as well as his development strategies for the Federal Capital Territory. Mr. Wike, who reaffirmed his commitment to properly discharging his duties, said President Bola Tinubu has never interfered with any decision concerning the FCT. The FCT minister says he will not submit himself to his detractors who are doing everything to bring him down. We have ready to flag off two bus terminals. The third one will be 26 of this month, which will be at the center, uh, central business uh, area, at the back of the evil, uh, evil square. That is to improve our transport uh, system. There's no area council that you will go to now, you will not see two, three days being done at the same time. But even when the commission, we also commissioned, throughout in the way, even though it did not get attention of the presidency, we did not invite the presidency to come and commission such rules like in Pali. And away from the FCT, ex Niger Delta agitators have raised alarm over a less plot to cut short the administration of President Bola Tunubu and some other southern leaders. The group made the claim when they met in Portakot to review the political future and development of the region. Correspondent Uche Okoro reports. The forum says it is still in the business of fighting for the interests of the Niger Delta and the South. Their members are taking on a new cause, worried about the trend of marginalization against the region when it comes to politics and leadership. According to them, the administration of President Bola Tinubu has triggered another round of the usual opposition whenever a southerner is in power. We barely a year into the administration of His Excellency President Bola Tinubu, we are witnessing a violent agitation from some northern groups calling for his removal. This pattern of undermining southern leadership is not only unjust, but also deeply destabilizing. They frowned at the National Assembly's record of five former Senate presidents from the South who were not allowed to complete their tenures. The ex agitators insist that they will not allow history to repeat itself with Senator Godswill Akpabio. We had a lot of people from you know the North which gained a lot of support from us. And so why is it that when it comes to the turn of the South, we're not getting support from? We think that it's a deliberate attempt to cause problem in this country. Any attack, any insult on our Southern leaders will be considered as an affront against the people of the Niger Delta. Despite the controversy surrounding the Niger Delta Development Commission, the group is also pushing for the establishment of another regional interventionist agency. Imo State and the Abia State, that's part of the Abia State, has been structured into a South, you know, East Development Commission. Uh -huh. And Ondo, which is also part of the OIBR state, has been structured into the Southwest Development Commission. And so that's why we demand that the South South should also have a development commission for her that will cater for the pressure and the, and the development of the six states that makes up the South South region. The forum extended an invitation to the Southeast and Southwest geopolitical zones to protect the bloc's interest through the formation of the Southern Nigerian Movement. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Port Harcourt. Now let's turn attention to Ikiti State. The Pro-Chancellor and Chairman and Governing Council at the Federal University of Yekiti, Kai Odil Jo, says he will pursue innovation and infrastructural development towards achieving the renewed academic standards of the university. The Pro-Chancellor gave the assurance when he led other members of the Governing Council on an official visit to the institution. The chairman says he's ready to engage major stakeholders across the globe in a bid to position the university as one of the best in Africa. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Sunday Fashino, expressed optimism that with the coming on board of the University Governing Council members, the university will continue to take its place in academics. Infrastructure and facilities completely and grossly inadequate. 
for this uh, university. This is a very, very important university. And uh, uh, with the student population here and the interest of everyone here, the, infra the infrastructure and the facilities is, is really, really below, it's even below 50%, that's what I've said. So we need we need government intervention and people's intervention too. Well, our prospect is good. We're very optimistic that uh, we'll get a lot of support from all the agencies of the government, federal government that established the school uh, to help us so that uh, we can rapidly meet up with the infrastructure that is required to ensure that the children that are turned out of this school are well educated, they are well prepared for the future. And still in Ekiti State, the federal government has assured of its commitment to the improvement of youth productivity. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Students' Engagement, Sonia Shefong, gave the assurance in Ado Ekiti at a workshop organized for students' union leaders in the Southwest. Ms. Ashefon said student leaders will be trained on incisive leadership in order to build responsible young leaders who will move from protest to participation and help the federal government in achieving some of the objectives. Participants say the workshop will equip them with the rudiments of leadership in order to be active players in the socioeconomic development of the country. The training is about capacity uh, building and leadership training and again we are also looking at uh, building irresponsible young leaders in Nigeria and also teaching them about uh, productivities uh, how could they be, be productive to themselves how could they be productive to the country and how they can be also be more effective uh, uh, to the, uh, the, the students they are also leading on their various campuses. If society gets the kind of leaders it gets from the youths that are available at any point in time. So if you don't train people, you are not going to get anything out of what they will become in future. I really appreciate the federal government, especially President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It is a great opportunity and, and, a, and a privilege for me to be here. So if this program can continue, I can tell it will be of great help to Nigerian leaders. And let's now turn our attention to Cross River, where residents of Calabar took to the streets to raise awareness on the need to protect and honor humanitarian workers, including those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. At the flag of ceremony, the wife of the state governor, represented by the special advisor on programs, Queen Essien, says Cross River State is in solidarity with humanitarian workers who selflessly risk their lives to serve others. The Commissioner for Humanitarian, Humanitarian Affairs, Helen, Helen Isamo, maintained that World Humanitarian Day is a tribute to the unwavering commitment of humanitarian personnel. The head of disaster management at the Red Cross International and the program coordinator, UNFPA, emphasized the need for increased protection and respect for volunteers. It's a day set aside by United Nations to celebrate humanitarian workers all over the world and today we call on all cross Siberians to embrace humanitarian services. So many have lost their lives and some have sustained high level degree injuries and so this day was set aside to honor them, to celebrate them and to tell them that the government of cross River State acknowledge what they have been doing just like the world all over acknowledges what they have done. This is a, an important day for all those who are serving humanity in one way or the other. And that is why this day uh, is set aside by the United Nations. This day um, gives us a platform to call on those in power not to inflict harm on humanitarian aid workers in their cause to support those that are affected by conflict. 